Hello students, my name is Ms. Tran and today we will be doing a video lecture on what it means to draw an inference. Now before I begin, I'd like to take this moment to direct that question to you. What does it mean to draw an inference? Take a moment or two to jot down a few notes to see what you think it means. Moving on, today we will be working with four different common core standards and those four common core standards are related to reading. We will be able to find implicit and explicit meaning in text and by using those two types of thinking, we will be able to make inferences about what we read. So to be more specific, inferring is using the text and your background knowledge to come to a conclusion. It involves making educated guesses. And in other words, inferring is actually reading in between the lines. What do we mean by this? It means combining both explicit and implicit info. Explicit info is information that is directly stated in the text so there's no room for confusion or questions. Implicit information, on the other hand, is not directly stated, but rather implied, and it's generally understood in what is expressed. These meanings tend to be derived from our own personal experiences, backgrounds, and knowledge. And when we're trying to get implicit meaning, we ask ourselves questions such as why, when, and how a case is what it is. So let's try to put this into practice. And note that inferring is something that we do every single day. Take, for instance, this picture. We see a teacher with a cup of coffee, has dark circles under his eyes, and the explicit information that we're given is the cup of coffee and the dark circles under his eyes. By combining our own personal experiences and thinking, we can come to the inference that he probably didn't have very much sleep last night or had a rough night. So the inference is what we make when we combine the explicit meaning and the implicit meaning in order to come to a conclusion. And in this case, we can come to the conclusion that he's tired and he needs coffee. All right, so here's our first example. We're going to make an inference with an illustration. So on the left, we have an illustration of a father and his son, and they are at the zoo looking at a caged monkey. Note that there's a quote on the bottom that the father says to the boy, he didn't do anything, Gregory, this is a zoo. And our job is to find the two best inferences that support the illustration on the left. So, number one, the boy dislikes monkeys. Number two, the boy has probably never seen animals in a zoo before. Number three, the father is upset with the boy. Number four, the boy thinks the monkey is being punished. Number five, the boy and the father visit the zoo often. Which two inferences would best support the illustration on the left? If you think two and four, you are correct. Let's take a look at why. Number two says, the boy has probably never seen animals in a zoo before. What in the illustration supports this? Well, one thing, the boy is surprised. That is evidence, that is explicit meaning to show that the boy has probably never seen animals in the zoo before. Number four, the boy thinks the monkey is being punished. What evidence do we have for this and how do we make that inference? If we take a look at the quote at the bottom, it says, he didn't do anything, Gregory, this is a zoo. So the fact that the father has to reiterate that they're at the zoo shows that this is probably the boy's first time at a zoo and first time seeing caged animals. So the fact that he thinks is being punished shows that this is, his, this is something new. This is something that he hasn't been exposed to before. And this is how we make inferences with illustrations. So moving on, we have another example from a quote from the novel The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. The narrator says, we didn't always live on Mango Street. Before that, we lived on Loomis on the third floor. And the question that we have to answer using an inference is, in which setting did the narrator and her family live? Now, taking a look at the quote, we see that the explicit information is, before that, we lived on Loomis on the third floor. Implicit information is something that we gather from our own experiences and knowledge. So we know that she lives in a setting with many levels. A house doesn't exactly have third floors unless there's an attic, but then the narrator would, it, would specify that they lived in an attic, which she doesn't. So what conclusion, what educated guess can we come to, come to based on the explicit and implicit information? We come to the inference that the narrator and her family lived in an apartment. See how that works? Okay, so let's move on to a longer passage. So here we have a passage about a roofer and his customer. Take the time to read this passage within like two or three minutes 
and then try to select the two best inferences that support the text on the left. Okay, so we have five different inferences. Number one, at first, the author did not want to spend the extra thousand dollars. Number two, the author's roof would have held up for another year or two. Number three, the roofer may have planned all along to raise the price after the old roof was turned, torn off. Number four, the author believes that all roofers are con men. Number five, the roofer had been recommended to the author. If you selected one and three, you were correct. Now, number one, it says, at first, the author did not want to spend the extra thousand dollars. Let's take a closer look at how we differentiated between explicit and implicit meaning. And we did this by using a what the text says, what I say, and so chart. So if we take a look at the column, what the text says, that's the implicit information that we're going to insert. And then the following column, we have what I say. And that's the implicit information that we come up with based on our own knowledge. And by incorporating and inserting implicit information, we come to our inference, which is a statement that we selected from those list of inferences given on that previous slide. So the inference is, at first, the author did not want to pay the extra $1,000. How did we come to that inference? We have what the text says, and that's the explicit information. That's the quote that we inserted there to support how we came to our conclusion. We said, no way, I said, holding my arms. Now, when we see that someone's folding their arms and shakes their heads and says no, it usually means that he or she is reluctant to agree. And by combining the explicit information and implicit information, we come to our inference. We can see that at first, the author did not want to pay the extra thousand dollars. So that's one inference that we can make based on this passage. Note that we can always make more than one inference based on a passage as long as there is evidence to provide. So, the second inference that we made was, the roofer may have planned all along to raise the price after the roof was torn off. What did we gather from the text in order to come to this educated guess? The text says, there was a barely hidden smile on his face. Now what I say? Well, usually when I see that someone's smiling suspiciously, it usually means he or she's being kind of shady. So it means that he is being up to something, and that's how we came to this inference. We came to the inference that the roofer may have planned all along to raise the price after the roof was torn off. So that's how the what the text says, what I say, and so chart works. So for Thursday, please read the story Departure by Sherwood Anderson and come prepared to use and apply the what the text says, what I say, and so chart, and also come prepared with any questions that you have about making inferences. If there's any confusion, I'll be ready to answer any confusion that occurred. And that is everything. Thank you.